Thank you for joining me everyone and in this video we're going to cover the core changes to Joy Spring and I'm also going to give you an efficient way to learn and memorize those core changes. So let's dive right in. This is Joy Spring as a reminder it's in the key of F concert which is G for us B flat instruments. Everything I'm talking about and playing here if you're a concert instrument and you need to transpose just take everything down a whole step and you're good to go. So I'm not going to cover the intro to Joy Spring in this video. If you're interested in knowing what's going on there, let me know in the comments and I'll make a separate video about the introduction to Joy Spring. So if you look to my right and your left, you're going to see the chord changes and scales associated with those chord changes displayed as I'm discussing these chord changes. I'm going to give it to you in scale degrees and then I'm going to tell you what the chord changes are. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a quick lesson on how to go about memorizing these chord changes and a good way to navigate them. Um, if you're new to this kind of thing. So we're going to be covering this song in the key of G, which is the key I'm in as a B flat instrument. Um, and the form of this tune is A, A, B, A. So the first A and the last A are exactly the same. The second A is exactly the same as the first and last A, except it's up a half step. And then the bridge is a, a there's some things going on in the bridge, but we're going to get there. So as always, I'm going to cover this in scale degrees and then chord changes. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a quick lesson on how to memorize and work on these chord changes. So in relation to the key of G, which is the key we're in, you have major one and then a minor two and then a dominant five and then a major one again. And then you have a minor four, which is a step out of the key. Uh, and then you have a minor three with a flat nine. And then you have a dominant six with a flat 13. And then you have a minor two and then you have a dominant five and then you have a major one again. So in relation to G, that is G major seven, and then you have A minor seven, and then D seven or D dominant. Then you have G major seven again, it resolves. Then you have a minor four. This is C minor seven, and you can see it over here. And then it does a three, six, two, five back to the one. So a minor three with a flat nine, which is B minor with a flat nine, B minor seven with a flat nine. And then you have E dominant with a flat 13, uh, as you can see over here because you're resolving to A minor, which is why those chord changes work the way they do. Um, and then you have A minor 7, because you resolve there. And then you have D7, D, uh, D dominant 7, and then you have G major 7 again. And then for the second A, the chord changes are the same, you just go up a half step. So there's a pickup to the second A where you have a 2, 5, 1 to A flat instead of G. You're going up to A flat. So that is B flat minor 7 to E flat 7 to A flat major 7. And then your chord changes are exactly the same. One, two, five, one, four, three, six, two, five, one. So you have A flat major seven, then you have B flat minor seven, and then E flat seven, and then A flat major seven, and then you have D flat minor, which I usually like to think of enharmonically as C sharp, because it's a little easier. Um, if I'm thinking about it in flats, you end up with what, an eight flats in D flat minor. So you end up with some double flats, which is no fun to think about. So minor four, D flat minor seven, then you have a 3, 6, 2, 5. So you have C minor 7 with a flat 9, then you have F7 with a flat 13, and then you have B flat minor 7, and then E flat 7, E flat dominant, back to A flat major 7. And then we hit the bridge, and the bridge is a series of descending two fives. So it goes up another half step to A, which you can see over here, and it does a pickup into the bridge with a 2, 5 to A. So it plays B minor 7, E dominant 7, E, uh, uh, E7, E dominant 7, to A major 7. And then that A becomes minor because you're walking down in whole steps. So then that A becomes minor. So it's A minor 7 to D7 to G major 7. And then that G becomes minor because you're going down another whole step. So that becomes the 2. That becomes G minor 7 to C7 to F major 7. And then we jump up and we do another 2 5. We jump up to A flat and you play a B flat minor 7, E flat 7, dominant 7 to A flat major, and then we're walking down another half step and we're resolving back to where we started, we're back to G. So you play an A minor seven to a D seven to a G major seven. And then the last A is exactly the same as the first A. One, two, five, one, four, three, six, two, five, one. So G major seven, A minor seven, D seven, D dominant seven, G major seven, C minor seven, that's your step out of the key, gives you some nice color tones. Um, and you know changes the color palette a little bit and then you have that three six two five back again you have b minor seven with a flat nine you have e dominant with a flat 13 then you have a minor seven and then d seven and then you're back to the top g major seven so those are your chord changes to joy spring they're really not that complicated but the melody that's going on makes it seem like there is a lot of chord changes going on now that being said 
The bridge has some interesting modulations going on, but when you think about it, it's really just a series of two five ones that once you know the pattern and how they move and you know what scales are associated with those two five ones, uh, it's not that complicated to navigate. So now, like I said, let's talk about how to memorize and work on those chord changes real quick. Now, the easiest way I've found to memorize chord changes like this, once you've had it laid out, um, I would sit down and write them out by hand. Just, you can write one, two, five, one, four, three, six, two, five, or you can write out the chord changes, D major, A minor seven, D seven. Um, I find that writing it out just helps solidify it. You have something visually and you're writing it out how you're used to writing things. It just helps solidify it in your mind a little better. But playing these, I start with the, the, the tonal centers. All I do is I go through the chord changes, even at a time, and I just play the, the roots of all the chords to make sure I know exactly how they're moving. It sounds like this. So doing that helps you remember what all the chord changes are. Now while I'm doing that, I'm also thinking of the scales associated with those chord changes. You could see them going by as I was playing them. So a lot of times I'll take it really slow and I'll just play the chord changes uh, as fast as I can picture the scales or as fast as I can visualize the scales associated with those chord changes. And sometimes you have to take a second um, and it can get a little tedious at times, but take your time to go through it to where you can think, all right, G major seven or G scale. Uh, C minor scale, all the notes associated with that, and then your 3625 and how you're resolving to the minor two and the alterations that, that involves. Um, and you've seen them as we go through the video. If you need to go back and look through, you can see all the different alterations. I try to lay them out as accurately as possible. So the next step after playing all the root notes is you go through and arpeggiate all the chord changes through the song. And you can do this slowly at first, just really make sure you're playing them accurately. And then as you get the hang of it and become less tedious, you can put on a version of the song and you can play it uh, in real time with the song. So you can hear how the chord changes are moving in time and you can also hear how the chord changes are moving against the melodies and against the improvisation that's happening. This is a really great exercise to play over um, somebody's solo. It can be hard to differentiate the two, um, but it's really interesting to hear how the pros navigate against the chord changes that you're playing. So it sounds a little something like this. <laughs> Etc. Etc. I'm not going to play through the whole song, but you arpeggiate the chord changes in that way throughout the course of the song, and you don't don't start that quickly. Start a little slower, um, and as you get the hang of it, you can speed it up and speed it up and try to play in real time. So I would start there. I would play your root tones to all the chords as you go through the chord changes till that is not difficult, till it's not tedious, and then I would go through and I'd arpeggiate all the chord changes. Um, once again, until it's not tedious and you can play it at speed through the chord changes. And then there's a bunch of other steps you can take after that. You can pick like your threes and sevens and play those over all the chord changes and try to make them as smooth as possible, try to make melodies out of the threes and sevens. Or you can pick a specific chord tone and try to stay as close to that as possible while navigating all your changes around it. But we'll get into that in future videos. So there you have it. Those are the chord changes to Joy Spring. You know them in scale degrees and seventh chords. And you can see your scales associated with those seventh chords. And you have a way to start memorizing those chord changes efficiently. So thanks for joining me, smash the like button, and I'll see you all in the next one.